good day class so for week three for construction management okay so let's uh, look some uh, some uh, key concepts so this is from the University of Liverpool where I took my master's in project management so let's talk about the project structure and organizational context so it's much better if you just look into the key concepts so it is uh, for project structures and organizational uh, context so it is quite easy to see that not all projects are the same so building a house is different than building a bridge and both are different than developing software or conducting a biotech research project so furthermore if projects differ in their inherent nature then it should follow that the way they are managed should also vary Although attempts have been made to develop a classification scheme for projects, there is not yet a universally accepted model. So this week, we shall examine some of the possibilities and consider the way project structures and project managers have adapted to the increasing complexity of the global business environment. So each of the project classification structures we explore addresses the impact of uncertainty on the methods and choices available to project managers for adapting to the unique needs of each project. So then as you study the materials for this week, reflect on projects with which you are familiar and classify them using each of these approaches. So I think some uh, I think most of you are my students also in professional practice and then we just discuss about the different project uh, building types there in the project types so I think uh, you should be able to reflect and try to connect them so critically analyze what combination of approaches provides the most insight for you in addressing the unique challenges in your organization so project types and structure each project has a goal resulting in a deliverable of a product or service project attempts to solve problems and address opportunities. While the solution path for some problems is clear, for others it is unclear. So Waisoki used these two dimensions of goal and solution clarity to create a four quadrant typology of projects. The goal may be clear or not clear and the solution may be clear or not clear. So when both the goal and the solution path are clear, we have what is today referred to as traditional project management. Each projects are also called well-defined projects. Examples include construction of buildings, bridges, and setting up manufacturing processes. In projects such as these, the projects and criteria for success are defined. The uncertainty associated with such projects is lower than those projects where either the goal or the solution is unclear. To demonstrate how different types of projects are managed in different ways, Shen Har focused on technical and engineering-based projects that typically result in a new product, process, or service for his conceptual model of project types. The framework he proposed classifies projects in the four levels of technological uncertainty and three levels of system and complexity. So the article provides Additional descriptions of projects included in each of the following dimensions. So, you have type, type A, the low technologic uncertainty dimension, implementing familiar technologies using mature technologies. So, I think this should be group 1 in our professional practice tree, the group 1 buildings. Then we have the medium technological uncertainty projects, which are common in industrial projects relying on mature technologies but involving limited use of new technology. And we have type C, the high technological uncertainty projects involving the first use of new but existing technology. We have the type D, the super high technological uncertainty projects requiring the development of new technologies that do not exist at the time of project initiation. So the complexity dimension focuses on the design and managerial implications of system scope. The scope one, an assembly project, building a collection of modules combined into a single unit. Scope two, a system, building a collection of interaction elements functioning together within a single project. Scope three, 
an ARI project or program building a dispersed collection of systems that function together to achieve a common purpose. Then, the qualitative find findings of 26 case studies distributed across these dimensions provide detailed narratives describing actual projects and the management tools and practices used in different projects at different levels of uncertainty. So five years later, we have uh, Bivir, Sadef, and Mal Malak finds added two additional dimensions to Shener's complexity and system classification to investigate the relationship among project managers, personality, and project type and project success. The two additional dimensions were novelty, which is the breakthrough platform or derivative and pace, regular, fast, competitive, time critical, and blitz. We'll return to this article in subsequent weeks where our focus is critically analyzing characteristics of project success and failure. So for our purposes this week, it is sufficient for you to consider the additional dimension of pace and novelty as you analyze how projects are structured. So best learn hubs reinforce the notion that there is general recognition that project management is practiced differently in different contexts and expanded the focus on project types to investigate empirically how project practices vary depending on project type. So in contrast to Shenhar's qualitative approach from a survey of 2,339 project practitioners, the authors identified 108 practices, tools, and techniques. All 108 are listed and classified uh, in Appendix A and are worthy of careful review. So Bessner and Hobbs wanted to compare project practices between project types of different industries. The authors classified four types of projects, business and financial services, engineering and construction, IT and telecom, software and development. So Bessner and Hobbs found that 108 practices were used in clusters or groups that the authors were able to organize into distinct tool sets. These two sets can assess project managers in adapting their focus and approach without addressing all 108 practices individually. This is particularly important because Bessner and Hobbs found significantly different and contrasting patterns of practice among the four types of projects examined. Then we have here project uncertainty, which is common to all project types. So each of the project classification approaches described above attempts to address the interaction between complexity and uncertainty and the impact that this interaction has on project management practice. So after we study this week, it should be clear that not all projects are alike and therefore there is no, no one-size-fits-all approach to managing them. Uncertainty exists about many aspects of a project. Will we have the necessary resources at the time they are needed? Will the resources have the required expertise? Will key stakeholders approve of the work we do? Will we be able to get assigned team members committed to the project? Will the weather cooperate? Will the labor union cooperate with us or threaten a strike? Will cultural differences create problems? Uncertainty create risk and risk create uncertainties. So managing risk and uncertainty are a major aspect of successful project management. So Lechler, Eddington, and Gao succinctly summarized the need to address uncertainty and acknowledging so by virtue of their unique nature, projects are mired in uncertainty. The authors discussed the differences between risk, known unknowns, and uncertainty which are unknown unknowns. The authors define these unknown unknowns as unforeseeable project situations that do not necessarily lead to negative consequences. So the focus of their study is on demonstrating the importance of becoming sensitive to the opportunities presented by uncertainties. Experience during project implementation. So the study examined five categories of opportunities using an explorative case study involving 20 projects representing eight project types. So you have a uh, project development uh, uh, project, IT or IS project, construction projects, R&D projects, business realignment projects, clinical trial projects, market penetration models, and feasibility study. 
So the article describes six categories of unknown unknowns encountered in the case studies. The following categories of opportunities arising from uncertainties are examined in depth. So we have technology and opportunity, implementation process opportunity, project business opportunity, future project business opportunity. So the authors conclude not to identify opportunities in uncertainties, project managers need significant exposure to the project's business context. It's exactly that exposure that this program emphasizes to each of the modules to prepare project managers to become strategic players in providing business value. So, um, we will look, uh, guys, into the different project types as we have discussed in our professional practice. Then let's uh, also reflect on the opportunities that's, uh, that, uh, that, that arises from the uncertainties on the different project types. If you remember, we have group one, the simple buildings, the group two, the moderate complexity, and the group three, those with, um, which are, those buildings are exceptional in nature, such as nuclear facilities. So I'll post our activity, guys, related to our lecture this week in construction management uh, in our Padlet link. Then we'll try to relate it with our professional practice lecture also. Then... I think uh, we will also, next week, we will discuss a bit about the T5 uh, project, which is an airport in the in the UK. And it will be our case study for project management. So if you have further questions or clarifications, you can reach me anytime. You can send an email or send a message to our group chat. I'll reply. Uh, uh, I, can, I reply usually anytime as long as I'm not uh, busy. Okay, so see you next week, guys.